The year is 2018. Apple has just announced the first major redesign of the MacBook Air with a Retina display, Touch ID and the controversial butterfly keyboard. This was the laptop that bridged Apple's Intel era with its modern design language. Seven years later, this thing's older than TikTok trends. But here's the question. Can this Intel-powered grandpa still handle 2025? Or was just a stepping stone to Apple's Silicon Revolution? The 2018 MacBook Air marked a significant update to Apple's iconic Ultrabook line, blending portability with modern features. Seven years ago, this laptop was the flex. Retina display, Touch ID and a design so thin it made Windows laptops blush. This machine was everywhere. Your favorite creators used it. Your college roommates swore by it. But today, it's like re-watching The Office. Comforting, but kinda slow. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> what? What? Where's the funny? Give it to me. To understand the significance of the 2018 MacBook Air, let's take a brief look at the history of the model. Since its initial release in 2008, the MacBook Air has gone through several generations. The first generation introduced the iconic thin wedge-shaped design, LED backlit display, Intel Core 2 Duo and the first mainstream laptop with SSD. Who can forget the moment when Steve Jobs pulled it out of a manila envelope to redefine ultra portables? Let me take it out here. This is the new MacBook Air. The second generation, known as the tapered unibody era, brought a lighter and sturdier aluminum unibody chassis, newer Intel CPUs, higher screen resolution, improved battery life and stereo speakers. The third generation, dubbed Retina, received a major bump in display specifications. This is the generation that the 2018 MacBook Air belongs to and it's the one we'll be focusing on in more detail. The current generation, Apple Silicon, has further revolutionized the MacBook Air. The M1 introduced in October 2020 made Intel MacBooks obsolete overnight. The subsequent M2 MacBook Airs brought a flat redesign that bridged the gap between the Air and Pro models. And with the recently announced M4 MacBook Air, it's interesting to look back at the 2018 model and see how it holds up. In 2018, the tech world was abuzz with the Fortnite phenomenon, which was fueling dance crazes and catapulting Twitch streaming stars like Ninja to fame. Meanwhile, Apple was facing pressure to update its aging MacBook Air. Despite its popularity and reliability, the MacBook Air had been largely neglected, with few significant updates between 2010 and 2017. This period of stagnation had led many to believe that the MacBook Air was no longer a priority for Apple, which had been focusing on its more premium Pro line. In fact, critics had begun to refer to the MacBook Air as a zombie product, a term coined by industry experts to describe a product that is still being sold but no longer receives significant updates or support. However, in 2018, Apple surprised many by releasing a completely redesigned MacBook Air featuring a stunning new Retina display, improved performance and a more modern design. The 2560 by 1600 pixel screen was a quantum leap from the old Air with 48% more colors than the previous TN panel, covering the P3 white color gamut for vibrant, true-to-life visuals. Reviewers praised it as the reason to upgrade. This update ended the decade-long era of the chunky bezel Air, aligning it with the sleek aesthetic of the MacBook Pro. For many, this was the moment the Air stopped feeling like a budget compromise. However, the impact of this high resolution on a relatively small screen is debatable. By default, the MacBook Air uses scaled resolutions to balance sharpness with usability, because rendering the UI at native resolution would result in extremely small text, icons and menus. The default resolution is 1440 by 900. Despite the passage of time, the screen still looks good today. In July 2019, Apple released updated models with True Tone Display technology, which uses ambient light sensors to automatically adjust the display's color temperature to match the surrounding light. While the effectiveness of True Tone technology is a matter of debate, the 2018 MacBook Air does not have this feature. The 2018 MacBook Air's design is quintessentially MacBook, with its iconic wedge shape and glowing Apple logo. Its slim, 
thin and ultra portable, making it a beautiful piece of hardware that feels nice in the hand. However, the thin body comes at a price. The Air has just two USB-C ports, both of which are Thunderbolt 3s that support charging, data transfer and external displays. In contrast to its predecessors, the 2018 Air lacks traditional ports like USB-A, MagSafe, SD card slots and HDMI. While Thunderbolt 3's versatility was future-proof, the lack of traditional ports meant that users have to rely on dongles or adapters to connect older devices, which could be inconvenient. With only two ports, users have to juggle accessories, such as using a hub to charge and connect peripherals at the same time. The 2018 Air also introduced two new features, Touch ID integrated into the power button for biometric login with a fingerprint, and the T2 security chip, which enhances SSD encryption and enables support for Hey Siri voice commands. These features added an extra layer of convenience and security to the MacBook Air, making it an even more appealing option for users. The Touch ID was borrowed from the more expensive MacBook Pro, as well as the keyboard. And yes, the keyboard. The butterfly keyboard, infamous for sticky keys and unresponsiveness. Apple's repair program became a PR nightmare. But what was the story? Introduced to enable thinner laptops, the butterfly keyboard replaced the traditional scissor switch design with a shallow flat hinge system. Reduced key travel led to a typing on concrete feel criticized for discomfort during prolonged use. The mechanism was prone to failure if dust, crumbs or particles entered the keys, causing keys to stick, repeat or become unresponsive. Reports of malfunctioning keyboards flooded forums and social media. Apple offered free repairs for affected models, but repeated failures frustrated users. The 2018 Air's keyboard became a cautionary tale for prioritizing thinness over usability. By 2020, Apple reverted to the scissor switch magic keyboard, admitting defeat. Personally, I'm not a fan of this type of keyboard. It looks stylish, but I'm not that comfortable using it. It might be a matter of getting used to it. The Force Touch trackpad is relatively large, making it easy to navigate and use gestures. It's praised for its precision and responsiveness. No cons here. The 2018 Air embodied Apple's late 2010s dilemma. How to make a laptop ultra-thin without sacrificing usability. The result was mixed. At 2.75 pounds or 1.25 kilos, it was lighter than most Windows rivals. But the CPU was underpowered even in 2018, throttling under load and struggling with heavy tasks. Apple equipped it with an 8th generation Intel Core processor from the Amber Lake Y series, which is a line of low power CPUs tailored for thin and light devices. Specifically, the processor used was the Intel Core i5 8210Y, a dual core CPU with a base frequency of 1.6 GHz and a turbo boost up to 3.6. Unlike the MacBook Pro, which often provides multiple CPU options, for the 2018 MacBook Air 13, Apple did not provide alternative CPU choices. The customization options available at purchase were limited to RAM and storage. In 2025, this MacBook Air is suitable for light tasks like web browsing, office tasks and video playback. 4K YouTube is not an issue. The multitasking depends on how many apps are open and how much RAM is needed. The onboard RAM here is 8 gigs, and there is no option for expansion. This Air has a single fan paired with a small heatsink to cool the 7 watt CPU, which still runs hot due to Intel's older 14 nanometer architecture. The fan is small, quiet and optimized for low noise over maximum cooling. I was only able to hear it during benchmarking. When it comes to benchmarking, I believe that raw numbers from synthetic tests are only useful when compared to other products as they provide a relative measure of performance. I don't have another MacBook at hand, but I have an Apple Silicon M2 chip in a Mac mini body. While the comparison is not entirely scientific due to differences in cooling and other factors, it still provides a useful indication of the performance gap between the two systems. The M2 Mac Mini obliterates the 2018 MacBook Air in all benchmarks thanks to the architectural advantages of Apple Silicon, including its unified memory, efficiency cores and neural engine. The M2 chip has a more advanced core design with a combination of high performance and efficiency cores that provide a significant boost in processing power. 
In terms of GPU capabilities, the M2's 10-core GPU is a highly capable integrated GPU, suitable for demanding tasks like 4K video editing, gaming and 3D rendering, while the Air's Intel UHD Graphics 617 is a basic integrated GPU only suitable for light tasks like video playback. The differences in ML workloads are also significant, with the Air struggling with quantized operations, a type of computation commonly used in mobile and edge AI applications. This is the latest Intel-powered Air generation before Apple Silicon reshaped the lineup in 2020 with the M1. It represents the end of an era, Apple's reliance on Intel and the thermal power compromises that came with it. The Intel CPUs became a relic overnight when the M1 Air debuted with faster CPU performance and longer battery life. Software-wise, Apple dropped Intel support in 2024. Sorry buddy, you're stuck in the past. The latest Mac OS version, Sequoia, is not available for this Air, but it still runs the previous one, Sonoma, from 2013. The differences aren't that big in my opinion. The biggest new features in latest macOS are Apple Intelligence AI features and iPhone mirroring. Sonoma remains a solid, stable option, but will not receive future upgrades to even newer versions of macOS. The 2018 MacBook Air 13 in 2025 is a mixed bag. Its cost savings, familiarity and portability make it appealing for budget-conscious users or those with basic needs like browsing and document editing. A cheap, durable laptop for schoolwork, basic coding with Scratch and Python, or learning Mac OS. However, performance struggles, battery wear, limited software support, and outdated hardware pose serious challenges, especially for more demanding tasks or users wanting modern features. Light photo editing is okay, but 4K video editing, Blender or Lightroom will chug if they run at all. In conclusion, the 2018 MacBook Air's launch is a masterclass in marketing versus reality, demonstrating how Apple can effectively market a product's desirable features, such as its retina display and slim design, while also revealing the trade-offs that come with prioritizing form over function. The retina display and slim bezels still look good, but the keyboard's short keystrokes and reliability issues are notable drawbacks. Additionally, the butterfly keyboard's reliability issues persist even after repairs, making it a concern for long-term use. The 2018 Air's suitability for use depends on the user's specific needs, with it being a viable option for light tasks but potentially underpowered for more demanding applications. The average price of a used 2018 MacBook Air in the US market is around $200 with prices varying depending on the condition of the device. In contrast, a used M1 Air typically costs around $400, while a brand new M4 Air starts at $1000, highlighting the significant price difference between these models. Ultimately, whether the 2018 MacBook Air is worth using depends on the user's specific needs and budget, but it is clear that it has been surpassed by newer models in terms of performance and value.